welcome back to video 17, number 2, chapter 17, number 2, for AP Statistics. You're going to need your book and your CAS and your notes. Okay, so make sure you've got all your materials together. Let's start on page 402 um, with exercise 10. Suppose a computer chip manufacturer rejects 2% of the chips produced because they fail pre-sale testing. So the probability of rejecting any one chip is 0.02%. So that's the probability of getting a bad chip. Question A asks, what's the probability that the fifth chip you test is the first bad one you find? Okay, so that is going to be a geometric probability where x is 5. It's a geometric because you are finding the probability that the first success occurs on some specific um, trial. And it's um, we're going to use geometric PDF because it is a probability that x equals 5. Anytime Anytime it is just x equals one particular value, you're going to be using PDF. That's probability distribution function. If it's an inequality, you'll use cumulative distribution function or CDF. Okay, so we're going to use geometric PDF. We don't have to use the formula. The, so we're going to go to the scratch pad and we're going to select menu, probability, distributions, geometric PDF. Keep going because it is way down on the list. Press enter and you will have a menu prompting you for P and X. Enter 0 0.02 for P and 5 for X. Okay, so the probability that X equals 5 is 0 0.0184. All right, question B asks, what's the probability you find a bad one within the first 10 that you examine? So it might be on the first or the second or the third all the way up to the 10th. But you find one somewhere in there. So we're asking, what's the probability... The first bad chip is within the first 10, so probability x is less than or equal to 10. So now we have an inequality, so we're going to use geometric CDF. So we're using geometric because we're still interested in the first bad chip, and we're using CDF because we have an inequality statement. So go to the scratch pad, select menu, probability, distributions, but this time select geometric CDF. Keep going because it's way down on the list. Press enter and you will have a menu prompting you for P, lower bound, and upper bound. Enter 0 0.02 for P, 1 for lower bound, and 10 for upper bound. Why? Well, we want the probability that X equals 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 all the way up to 10. So the lower bound is 1 and the upper bound is 10. All right, when you found that probability, the probability X is less than or equal to 10 is 0 0.1829. All right, for exercise 12, on page 402, we are asked for the computer chips described in exercise 10. How many do you expect to test before finding a bad one? So we're being asked for the expected number. Now, you need to make sure you know the difference between the formulas for, uh, for both expected value, which is the same thing as the mean, and the standard deviation for geometric distributions like this one for binomial distributions, and then for just regular old, plain old, random variables. There are three different formulas, and you need to know when to use what. This time, though, we're finding the expected value, the mean, of a geometric distribution. So we're going to use the 1 over P formula. So 1 divided by 0 0.02 is 50. So 50 chips. So that's how many we expect to test before we find a bad one. All right, let's change scenarios. Let's look at problem number 18. An Olympic archer is able to hit the bullseye 80% of the time. Assume each shot is independent of the others. If she shoots six arrows, what's the probability of each of the following results? Okay, so our uh, probability of uh, the first bullseye on the third arrow, which is what we're asked for the first question, um, it's going to be a geometric PDF, and so we want to know the probability x equals 3 because we're saying that the first bullseye will be the third arrow, and so that's 0 0.032. That's not very likely. Okay, she misses the bullseye at least once. That's a little more complicated, so we're going to skip it, come back at the end of the problem. Let's look at C. Her first bullseye comes on the fourth or fifth arrow. So we want the probability that the first bullseye is on the fourth or fifth arrow. We can use PDF where we do probability x equals 4 plus probability x equals 5. And so we do 0 0.0064 plus 0 0.00128 and we get 0 0.00768. 
All right, for part D, we want to know the probability she gets exactly four bullseyes. So this is a binomial PDF where x equals four out of six trials. So why is that binomial? Because we're not saying that the first bullseye is on the fourth trial. We're saying that out of the six trials, she gets exactly four bullseyes. So we have to use binomial um, calculations. Luckily, our calculator will handle that for us. So we go to the scratch pad, select menu, probability, distributions, binomial PDF. You will be given a menu that prompts you to, to enter the number of trials in the probability of success P and the X value. So enter 6 for N, 0.8 for P, and 4 for X. And so you get that the probability that X equals 4 is 0.24576. Alright, let's look at E, the probability that she gets at least 4 bullseyes. So that's the probability that X is greater than or equal to 4. Alright, it's still binomial because we're counting the number of successes. And so uh, we're going to use binomial, but it's an inequality statement, so we use CDF. We tell it n equals 6, p equals 0.8, the lower bound is 4, and the upper bound is 6, because that's the highest number that it can go. She can. What we're saying is that out of 6 trials, she's going to get 4 or 5 or 6 um, bullseyes. And that, that does equal 0.90122. All right, for F, it says she gets at most four bullseyes. Well, that's the probability that X is less than or equal to four. So it's going to be binomial CDF um, where N equals six, P equals 0.8. Now, this time our lower bound is going to be zero because it is possible to get zero successes out of six trials. So you can just miss six times. I pretty much guarantee you, if I was out there doing some archery, that would be me. But anyway, we're not talking about me. We're talking about an Olympic archer. But at most four bullseyes, we've got to start at zero and go up to and, in, and include four, and that's 0 0.34464. All right. Up. Oh. That should be F there. I confused myself there for a second. That sh this should be F. Okay, we already did E. So now we're going to go back and get B. Probability um, that she misses the bullseye at least once. That that is going to be 1 minus the probability she never misses the bullseye. Okay, so one thing that you can remember is the probability of at least 1 is 1 minus the probability of none. And that's going to be the easiest way to work a problem like this. All right, so if she misses the bullseye at least once, means that she hits it every, uh, means that it's every scenario other than she never misses. Okay, so the complement of what we're looking for is that she gets six successes out of six trials. It's a lot easier to figure out than trying to figure this any other way. So whenever you have probability of at least one, you're going to do one minus the probability of none. So probability that she misses the bullseye at least once is equal to the probability, uh, excuse me, it's equal to one minus the probability that she never misses the bullseye. In other words, it's 1 minus the probability um, she has 6 successes out of 6 trials, or 1 minus the probability that x equals 6, where x counts the number of successes in 6 trials. So this is binomial PDF. Okay, that's why I wanted to wait to the end. I didn't want your first binomial problem to be this one. Okay, so the probability that x equals 6 uh, out of 6 trials when she gets 80% of individual ones correct is point. 2621. So 1 minus 0.2621 is 0.7379. Okay, let's look at example 20. It refers back to example 18. Consider our archer from ex exercise 18. How many bullseyes do you expect her to get? So that's asking how many, not on what trial, do you expect the first? So with the how many, we know we want the expected value of the binomial distribution. And so that is going to be n times p, which is 6 times 0 0.8, which is 4.8. Now we know you can't get exactly 4.8 uh, bullseyes, but remember for means and expected values, you get to go one degree more than what's possible. So eh, you can put 4.8. So that is the expected value of the number of bullseyes you expect her to hit. What's the standard deviation? Well, you got to do square root of n times p times q. So that's going to 
give us square root of 6 times 0 0.8 times 1 minus 0 0.8. So 6 times our square root of 6 times 8, 0.8 times 0.2, which is gives us the square root of 0.96, which is 0.98. Okay, and in number 20, she keeps shooting arrows until she hits bullseyes. How long? Oh, we didn't do number part C. Okay. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much. Have a good day, and I will see you in um, class.